Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Podar and today we have with us uh, the Bain Capital top team here to talk about their investment strategy in India and how the investor climate is really looking like for this particular year. Let me welcome on the show David Gross, the co-managing partner at Bain Capital and Pabninder Singh, who's a partner Bain Capital and he's based here right here in India. So David, uh, welcome to Mumbai. Uh, Thank and you. What, what is it that you're picking up here? And when we look at the overall scenario at the beginning of this particular financial year with the geopolitical tension and there is inflation and interest rate cycle turning that we are expecting and big elections in India and in the US. Yeah. How are you seeing as we start financial this financial year from the investor point of view? Thanks. Well, first of all, thanks for having us here. Um, we live in exciting times and, and, and turbulent times. Uh, there's a lot going on in the macroeconomic landscape. I would say that it's, in short, better than expected. You know, we came into this year thinking we would see the typical economic cycle after high interest rates, a lot of government stimulus in the U.S. that you'd see a weakening. But actually, you're seeing things uh, turning out to be pretty strong. Um, and this is what's causing there to be higher inflation, uh, but, but beneath that is good, resilient growth. You've had a strong labor market. You have um, strong manufacturing in the United States right now. Um, and so I think we're happy with the balance of, of where we are. Um, Europe has kind of been bottoming out a little bit. And Asia, I'd say, is a, is a, is a bright spot. Clearly, okay. you know, India has been a really strong and resilient growth driver. Uh, but other markets like uh, Japan have been you know, a positive surprise as well. Okay, so Japan is also looking good. They've, uh, after a very long time, they have to raise their interest rates. Yes. Uh, so that's also one thing which is uh, going to have a global impact, uh, and especially the FDI inflows into India as well, hopefully. Yes. Uh, now, Pavninder, we spoke very long back, and uh, you know, since then, Bain Capital has made some very big investments, and we'll talk about them. But in the very beginning, $7 billion in the next um, few years. How are you looking at uh, ascertaining where the growth opportunities are? No, look, it's very exciting times in private equity in India. We've, um, you know, put that in context over the last 18 plus months, we've invested over $2 billion as a yes. platform in India. So as we look ahead to the next three to five years, um, seven, eight, nine, ten billion, I think is sort of the range that we aspire to. And I think that's, um, you know, indicative of the opportunity and the acceleration in the investment opportunity. Mm. Um, I would say there's a few things that go into that. Obviously, there's been, you know, great fundamentals in terms of the foundation across our physical digital infrastructure, mm. a lot of the reforms that have been laid. Uh, and I think that is the foundation for the economic growth that is exciting investors globally mm. about India, including ourselves. Mm. I think within the private equity industry, um, it has evolved to a place that I think suits investors like us, which is more scale transactions, mm. more control transactions, more global businesses where we can leverage our global platform to yeah. you know, help these companies accelerate their journey. Mm. Uh, and I think that creates uh, more opportunities. Mm. And then really across sectors, I mean, you know, financial services, we've been very active, mm. industrial manufacturing, which I think is seeing a lot of interest now with the Made in India and mm. uh, China Plus One. It's one of the sectors, you know, some of our initial deals here, Motor Corp and others have been in industrials, so that yes. is a, core focus area for us, mm. um, knowledge industries, so tech services, um, you know, continues to be a pretty exciting uh, area, especially with Gen AI, which I'm sure we'll talk about, yes. um, and healthcare. Um, so I think across the gamut, um, you know, we're pretty excited and we yes. think there's going to be, um, you know, lots of opportunities to get to that target and hopefully more than that target. All right. So these are many of the sectors which are um, automatically the choice of every private equity because of the inherent, uh, you know, uh, trends in those particular sectors. But uh, David, what is it about India which is exuding so much uh, confidence, especially amongst the private equity players? Because every private equity uh, player that has come to my studio and spoken about India for this particular year, and there have been many actually global uh, you know leaders come yeah. here and they have increased the pace of investment in india so what is it that is really working well 
Sure. Well, we definitely think it's it's India's moment right now. I think it's the convergence of uh, some trends that have been happening for a number of years. The first are some really powerful structural changes that have been made to the economy, difficult to do, and have taken time to, to manifest the, the benefits. But you're seeing that now with the ease of doing business, um, with the focus on some of these uh, manufacturing, you know, high value added content type, type industries, right. which tend to pull along mm. logistics distribution. It pulls along mm. consumer spending. You've seen this positive you know, kind of virtuous cycle of growth yeah. in other Asian economies, and, you're, and that's happening in India now. The second is political stability. I, you know, it's, I think it's not an overstatement to say that this is a country that has maybe the most stable uh, government set up right now. Um, it's, I think, the first time since 19, the early 1960s when you had a, mm-hmm. uh, a leader uh, almost to be on a third, third term. And that's really important. It leads to mm-hmm. consistency of policies, mm-hmm. um, the ability for long-term investors uh, to make those bets on, yes. on uh, the India consumer, on infrastructure, uh, in other areas. Um, and third, as, as Papa was, was mentioning, you're kind of in the second generation mm. of uh, investments. You have great entrepreneurial uh, Indian you know, families and corporations who launch businesses that have grown a lot, and they're now ready to, uh, in some ways, turn them over to, to new owners to think about the next generation of management. And this is a big trend that we've seen in private equity markets in the U.S. and then in Europe and then in Japan, and now you're seeing it. Um, in India, mm. put all those things together, and that gives you a very, very powerful mix mm. uh, to support growth. And that's why I think everyone's really excited about India. All right. So many, many aspects really working well for India. Uh, do you think China plus one, uh, that benefit, uh, we have been talking about that for a long time. In your view, has that played out already, and what is the potential there? It is playing out, yes. And this will also be a long, long-term long structural change um, for which we're in the early innings, to use a baseball parlance. So uh, you've seen it directly because uh, large companies need to have backup plans for their global supply chains. Um, and they were very concentrated uh, in China for many years. India is really one of the few, arguably the only scale economy that's got not just uh, the infrastructure, but it has the talented uh, labor yes. that has got the positive and stable policies, as I was just mentioning. And so you're seeing it. We have investments. We invested in a, a ports business called JM Boxy, and that saw a significant benefit from new manufacturing goods inflow and outflow. This is about China plus one. Yes. We have an investment in a specialty agrochemical mm. synthesis company. A lot of this production used to be done in China. That's now shifting uh, to India. So it's for sure happening. Mm. There's going to be more because as you get these more complex supply chains set up around Apple, around Tesla, who I believe made a big announcement today. Yes. Um, that, again, pulls other componentry, mm. high-value-added technology, you know, materials and inputs um, that's going to lead to the next wave of growth. So it's for sure real. It's mm. structural. It's long-term. And I think it's going to have big benefits. Right. Uh, so sectors of the future are also developing very fast, and we are at a nascent stage of developing. So that's also a growth potential. Uh, but Pawan, when we talk about uh, you know Indian investments, how has the experience been over several years of your existence here uh, in terms of the return parameters, the exit opportunities? You made a very large investment. We'll talk about that. Yeah, no, I look overall, it's been a great market for us. It's one of our top two markets in Asia, both from a deployment and return perspective. Right. Um, you know, like I said, there has been an evolution, mm. uh, both in terms of the nature of deals, mm. the scale of deals, and probably most importantly, I think, for investors, and it goes back to um, this interest in India. Over the last, you know, call it three to five years, we've seen a step function change Mm. in the liquidity that investors have been able to get from India, right? And that's a function of both strategic interest. Mm. So our investment in JM Bakshi, we eventually sold to Hapag, which was one of the largest German FDI into India. Um, You know, interest in the public markets. Mm. So the um, evolution and sophistication of public market investors to you know, buy large blocks and mm. uh, stakes from private investors as they're looking to sell down. Yes. Uh, that's been an important source of liquidity. Um, and so I think when you put that all together, it's actually been a pretty attractive uh, market, both from a deployment perspective, the return generated, 
uh, and then most importantly, actually getting liquidity on those returns to return capital to investors. So it's, it's been one of our top markets, and we think it'll continue to be one of our top markets in Asia. So David Pavan, hold on to your thoughts, and we will come back with more discussion on Bain Capital's India strategy and some talk about their portfolio management over here right after this short break on Big Deal. Stay tuned.